what is failure? Yes, what is failure? Is it a lesson? Is it a test? Is it, a, is it training for one's development? Yes, we have to really analyze this and understand the definition for failure. Yes, one has to know the definition of failure in a personal context before we actually say something is a failure. That an event happens to you does not mean it's a failure like we are want to do. That's why our topic for today, how to handle failure is very important. We can learn from others and get better and deal with it appropriately and then move forward from it. Is it job loss? Is it barrenness? Is it divorce? What is it? Is it the doctor's report? That you ill, that you have cancer? Have all the people's had it before? What happened to those that survived? I did. Sure. Yes, I did. But first, watch this. Like we always say, please click the subscribe button. Yes, click the subscribe button so that each time we post the videos like this, it will come straight to you. And leave a comment. We like to hear what you feel, what you think about what we say, so that we can get better by the day with your help. And you can check out other of our videos in our website at jasperforum.net. Yes, check it out. We'll be very glad you did. I'll be going Patreon soon. And when we go Patreon, we'll look forward to your support, to your continued support to make us really, really research and bring you value content messages this week. But first, let's watch what our ancestors have to say about this. Yes. Take a look at that. It says what? Success in life likely depends on how you handle your failures. Yes. Yes, success, regardless. Yeah, look at the picture. Yes, someone just fell on the snow, but that's not the end of life. It's a depiction of how we categorize things. Success in life, yes, life it depends on how we handle failures. But first, did you know? Oh, check out that man, Alexander Pushkin. Yes, Alexander Pushkin. Alexander Pushkin, as we know, is the father of Russian literature. He's a colored man. Mr. Alexander Sajevich Pushkin, yes. He was born in 1799 and uh, passed away in 1837. Was a Russian poet, playwright, and novelist of the Romantic era. He is considered by many to be the greatest Russian poet and founder of modern Rus Russian literature. Pushkin was born into Russian nobility in Moscow. His father, Sergei Lovich Pushkin, belonged to Pushkin noble families. His maternal great-grandfather was Central African-born general, Abraham Petrovich Ganibal. Yes, uh, Mr. Pushkin, Alexander Pushkin, published his first poem at the age of 15 and was, and was widely recognized by the literary establishment by the time of his generation, from the uh, Zakoi uh, Silo Lucian. Yes, at the school, he was exiled. He was later exiled for his literary activis activism in his ode to liberty. The rest, they say, is history. Once again, did you know? Yes, did you know that the father of Russian literature was a colored man? All you need to do is just open up the book a little bit and you find out you you find out who really we are as colored people. The reigning mathematician in the world is a colored man in Nigeria and presently teaching in Russia. But once again, that we always said, did you know? 
What if what you consider as failure is a way God, nature, life wants to open another door for you? You are crying because you are stuck in the past. Yes, just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. You remember what Paul said? Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly, yes, outwardly, we are wasting away. Yet inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. Are you being, re being renewed? How are you handling what is coming to you? Do you believe what you're doing? Do you act on it? Or you dwell on it? First of all, do not isolate yourself. That is pure denial. Yes, do not isolate yourself. If it happens to you, job loss, barrenness, sickness, whatever it is, come out. Come out of it. It has happened. There's no need to dwell on it. Yes, let it go. Dwelling on it is just eating yourself or being angry about it. Or you choose to begin with yourself, wishing, hoping it was not you. Why me? Why me? Who are you? God, nature, life, don't, it doesn't owe any of us anything. We have to be grateful for what we have as a people. Individually still, even as a person, we have to be grateful for what life, what God, what nature, what opportunity is given to us for today. No need to begin. No need to look for change. Shake, shake out of it. Get out of it. It has happened. Accept it. Yes, acceptance. Denial, bargaining, depression. It is not going to work. Accept it. It has happened. It has happened, accept it. Just drive on like we see in the military. Don't, don't waste your time. If, if it's a job loss, dust up your resume and start immediately the next day applying from other jobs. Meanwhile, do all the little things you can to close the gap. Smile more, shake hands, meet people, introduce yourself. You got to do more. Yes, it has happened to so many more before. Just like myself. As a young man in college, I lost my roommates. Yes, I did. And as a soldier, I lost my battlemates as well. Yes, I did. After 16 years, I thought I got it all. And guess what? I got hit with cancer. Yes, I had brain tumor. Yes, look at it. I survived Iraq. I survived everything. 16 years. After my doctorate degree, I lost it all. Divorce? I got divorced. To someone I thought was my mate. Yes, but what do you do? Shake it off. Because maybe, maybe, God wants to open other doors for you. You're better than that. It is okay. If you believe in God, you know. Yes, God knows it's happening to you. Shake it off. Shake it off. Don't tell yourself, why me? Who are you? Who are you? God doesn't owe you or I or anyone else anything. Then guess what? Life he has given to us. So we've got to drive on. What do you think? What do you think? You can do better. I believe in you. Now, shout out for the day. Check this out. Oh, yes. Um, I'll shout out to today's going to Alabama to Professor George Washington Carver. Yes, he was more than a peanut man. The Tuskegee Institute Movable School was an outreach effort of the Tuskegee Institute, now Tuskegee University, aimed at bringing modern agriculture tools and methods to rural areas and people in Alabama. First established by agricultural researcher and professor George Washington Carver, the movable school was later managed by Carver Protege and Tuskegee graduate Thomas Monroe Campbell. 
The movable school operated in several official incarnations, starting with the Jessup Agriculture Wagon in 1906, oh my God, and ending with the Booker T. Washington Agriculture School on, 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 that's on, on wheels through 1944. That is 40 good years. Similar projects continue today in the form of traveling veterinary practices. So if you have the privilege of going to school, sitting down in a classroom today, no matter how bare, how dilapidated and unfair as a colored person. Remember our sisters and do better. This is why we acknowledge Professor Carver Washington, Professor George Washington Carver. Yes, did you know? And still we say that's a shout out for the day. George Washington Carver was more than the peanut man. Because there was a time in this country, it was illegal to let a colored person read and write. So we must be grateful and we'll call it out. Again, I believe in you. I believe in us as a people. If you look up, you see my information. I really look forward to hearing from you. You can deal with issues that happen with you in life. I survived, you can. You can. Let me carry my name.